When it comes to off-road American Icon vehicles, it doesn't get much better than a Jeep Wrangler. The company has been selling this nameplate in the US for nearly 40 years. And back in 2018, the company introduced an all new version of the Wrangler called the JL. Now, because it's been on the market for a few years, it's time for Jeep to give the JL Wrangler its first round of updates. As you can see, this is the 2024 model. It got some new styling updates, front and rear, some new technology, and a new trim level called the Rubicon X. So today we're actually out here in beautiful St. George, Utah, to drive the new Wrangler on road, off road. We're gonna go over all the changes that Jeep has made and the big question I went and answered. If you guys are looking for an iconic American off road vehicle, has Jeep made enough changes to the new Wrangler to keep this model competitive against Ford and Land Rover? Stay tuned to find out. Now, when you take a look at the styling of the 2024 Jeep Wrangler, you can see it pretty much still looks similar to the JL Wrangler that we first saw back in 2018. But the biggest change that Jeep has made on the outside is this new grille. Jeep actually introduced it in late 2023. And a lot of enthusiasts, again, don't really love change, weren't the biggest fan. Seeing it out in person on this Earl Grey color, this is a new Rubicon X trim. You can see the grille itself isn't quite as tall as the old pre-refresh model. And you can see Jeep also added some black accents to it. They have different finishes on the grill depending on the trim. There's also a new kind of air intake feature in between the slats. Jeep said that was necessary to allow for the cooling for this vehicle because the grill isn't quite as tall. Jeep says they had to do a newer grill that was not quite as tall because they needed to make room for the factory worn winch. You can now get this on the Rubicon models as part of a $2,000 upcharge. This is rated to pull a maximum of 8,000 pounds. So Jeep was really listening to owners because it's one of the biggest uh, modifications that Jeep owners actually purchase as a winch. This is again factory backed. It's backed by the factory warranty. It's tested to be safety tested to work properly. So this is a great option. This Rubicon X model that I'm showing you is also, also painted in this beautiful shade of Earl Grey. It's kind of like a bluish gray cement kind of color. It's a very trendy color, but it looks really great, especially on the lines with all the graphics that you find on the Rubicon 4xe. You can see uh, most of the higher trim levels of the Wrangler, if you guys go for the uh, Rubicon and up trims, you'll have full LED headlights with LED daytime running lights, LED uh, turn signals. You also have nice LED fog lights down here. The uh, Rubicon X trim that I'm showing you also comes standard with the steel bumper group, which again, this is great for off-roading. This is typically a $2,000 upcharge if you guys don't go for the Rubicon X if you want this package. Of course, you're gonna get a bunch of skid plates underneath. This model that I'm showing you here has the 33 inch tall tires. It doesn't have the extreme recon 35 package. I'll explain that to you a little bit later on. And then one of the other no notable changes is there is no more antenna here on the side of the vehicle. Vehicle. The Wrangler was one of the last vehicles that still had that old mass style antenna that flopped around in the wind. In the wind now, as you can see, they've integrated that antenna into the actual windshield of the vehicle. So it's just got much more of a cleaner look. And then this model here, you can also see has the forward camera system for the uh, adaptive cruise control. You're gonna get that as standard on this Rubicon uh, X trim level. But uh, moving around to the side profile of the Wrangler, this has continued to be offered in a two door and a four door configuration. Jeep says that uh, most buyers purchase the four-door model because it's just so much more practical. Uh, its wheelbase is 118 inches long. Its overall length for this model is around 188.5 inches long. Keep in mind, if you guys go for the Extreme Recon 35 package with the 35 inch tall tires, it does uh, lengthen the vehicle because of that spare that's larger to around 192 inches long. So that's gonna make this vehicle again, even longer for those of you who plan to fit into a tight garage. Now you can see Wranglers all got uh, new wheels this year. There's a total of 10 new wheel options. This is one of them. This is part of an optional wheel that you have to pay like I think uh, $1,500 for. You can see it's a 17 inch machine, two tone with a black inner spoke design. It's got the blue accents there because this is a four by E. Again, these are 32 inch or 33 inch tall uh, Goodyear or BF Goodrich all-terrain uh, K TA tires. Uh, keep in mind, again, you can get a 35 inch tall tire. However, you can't get the 35 inch tall tires on the four by E like the one that I'm showing you here. Uh, you have to step down to a gas only version or purchase a Rubicon 392. Now you can see, love the graphics that you get with the blue accents on the 4xE. Uh, there's now two trail rated badges. There typically was only one here on the driver's side. There's now one on the passenger side because they got rid of that mask antenna. You can see here's the charge port door for the 4xE. This vehicle has an onboard 7.2 kilowatt hour charger, which means it'll take around two and a half hours to fully charge this vehicle on a level two. Jeep says you get around 21 miles of electric only range. 
Uh, for an extra $3,200, my tester also has the Power One Touch Sky Roof. That is going to be standard if you guys go on the high altitude trim, which is only available on the 4xe. This is a great option that really lets the sun in really easily at the touch of a button. You can still remove the doors. You can still fold down the windshield. You can also take these little side panels out for those of you who want that open air experience, which is nice. And then coming around the rear of the vehicle, you can see pretty much no changes back here. Um, when you guys go for the LED uh, lighting package, you'll also have full LED tail lights. Your blind spot monitor is gonna be integrated right there into the actual uh, side of the tail, tail light. And you can see you have blue tow hooks that are mimicked from the front. They're carrying over to the back. Nice full size spare tire with a matching alloy. Again, if you guys go for the extreme recon package, not on this trim here because of the engine, uh, they'll actually reinforce this and give you a bigger spare tire, which is gonna increase the overall length of this vehicle. Now looking at the cargo area, this is a reason why everybody tends to buy the four door Wranglers because you get around 28 cubic feet of storage space on the four by E when you have that seat up, you can see underneath here, there is a little bit of storage where you can put the uh, mobile charger that's included with the vehicle. If you fold down the seats, the battery pack actually lives underneath the back seats of this vehicle. It does uh, expand the cargo to around 67 cubic feet. Keep in mind, if you guys go for a gas only version of the Wrangler, it'll actually have five more cubic feet versus the four by E because the battery does take up a little bit of space. So moving on to the interior of the 2024 Wrangler, as you guys can see, I've switched over to the V8 powered Rubicon 392 because I wanted to show you guys this red interior. This is the only configuration or trim line to get the red leather. You can see this is the premium Napa leather. It has Rubicon 392 embossed on the actual seat backs themselves. These are heated seats. And if you guys go for this trim and a Rubicon X and a high altitude, you'll get a 12 way power front seat system. So both the seats have a 12 way power adjustment. Uh, these seats, Jeep says, have also been tested to withstand um, extreme conditions and they're also tested to ex uh, extreme uh, wet conditions. So if you guys plan to drive this vehicle through like a creek, for example, and these get wet, they are guaranteed to work. At least that's what Jeep says. So it's nice that Jeep again is increasing the tech features. Now, this model here has almost 13 inches of ground clearance. So it's kind of got a little bit of a high step in height. But once I get in uh, and shut the door, the door has a nice solid thunk. Remember this uh, chassis hasn't been upgraded, but it's still a body on frame type vehicle. And you can see here's the key fob for the vehicle. This is the current Jeep fob that you find on the Wrangler. It also includes a little switchblade key, but it does have their intelligent access key. You also get remote start, lock, unlock, uh, panic functions, and you also will be able to access this vehicle through the Jeep app through your smartphone if you guys are an owner of the vehicle. Now starting it up, you can see start stop button is down here. Push the button and the V8 makes a nice growl. Now keep in mind, it started up with the exhaust baffles closed, but if I push this button here, you can immediately hear it get louder and then... <laughs> yeah, that's a sound that uh, people are going to miss when Jeep eventually goes all electric, sadly, like every other brand. Now in terms of the rest of the interior, the show stopper here obviously is this screen right here in the center. This is a 12.3 inch, touchscreen display running their latest Uconnect 5 software. This is standard even on the base version of the Wrangler. So if you guys go for the basic sport trim with manual windows and no cruise control, you still get this massive 12.3 inch screen with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and over the air updates. Their only upgrade really for this screen is embedded GPS, which this model has, as you can see here. Most of you probably won't care about that because you're gonna be using your smartphone anyways. You can see the touch screen itself is responsive. The graphics are also bright and clear. Jeep says that they've tested this screen to again be able to withstand the elements when you guys have the top down if it gets wet if it gets covered in dust for example and it also is designed to be extremely bright even in bright sunlight so you should be able to still see the screen it won't get washed out at least that's what Jeep tells us the rest of the interior you can see the dash got a complete redesign I'll talk about that in a moment the door panels on this model here our soft touch injection molded plastic. Remember these doors also come off even on this trim. You have your power window controls on the center over here. You have power mirror controls over here. You have your lock and unlock switch. I like the satisfying noise it makes when you hit the lock and unlock. The windows themselves, they are one touch down for the front, but not one touch up. And they're not even one touch down for the rears. The window controls, like I said, are here in the center because the doors come off. The steering wheel you can see is unique to the 392. It has the ability to do a tilt and telescoping function, but the range of motion isn't a lot for the telescope. So kind of try the seat out, make sure you can get a comfortable driving position. I do love the fact that the power seats allow you to kind of get that precision for exactly the point that you want to stop it at, which is going to be great if you're example off-roading and you need to make a little seat adjustment. You also get paddles on the wheel, which are actually metal. 
On this model, they're mounted to the actual wheel itself. Um, and then you have your usual controls here for the cruise control. This vehicle also does come with adaptive cruise control. No heads up display. And you can see the dash here has been fully redesigned to incorporate the bigger 12.3 inch display. The upper trim like this one has these really nice real leather stitching with the contrasting stitching. You have a grab handle here as well. You have redesigned air vents. And then the instrument panel you can see is practically the same. Jeep says they could have done with a fully digital display here, but they decided that this was going to be better with owners because they didn't want to overwhelm you with two screens. So instead you have a seven inch helper screen here, two analog dials uh, as well. And then you have the big 12.3 inch display. Um, the uh, upper portion over here, you can see uh, this has been redesigned to incorporate kind of like an accessory rail. If you take off this cover over here, you can mount things like a GoPro, your smartphone to here. Jeep says that it's one thing that owners really requested, which is why they wanted to include something like that. When I put the vehicle into reverse, you can see there's a backup camera, uh, which gives you a front and a rear view. You also have a front camera washer as well. If you want to clean the camera or clean the rear glass, uh, the, the graphic and the resolution has certainly improved uh, for this vehicle. And again, I like how quick and snappy it is. You have dual zone climate control. You have three level heated seats, but no cooled seats. I was kind of hoping Jeep would consider doing cooled seats, especially at the $90,000 price tag of this one that I'm showing you at. You can see down here, you have the auxiliary switches. You have your front and rear um, uh, locking differentials with your sway bar disconnect. You have a full-time four-wheel drive system with a traditional manual lever here with a traditional pull style handbrake. Again, this is all pretty much the same. You have cup holders here. You have a nice big center console area with another USB outlet over here. And then you have a separate media USB here where you have a USB A and a USB C and an aux port. I actually find myself using that one more, at least in the Wrangler that I own because of the fact that you didn't have wireless before, but now you do have wireless CarPlay. Uh, the glove compartment you can see is a is damped. It's a bin style. It's a little bit on the small side. I mean, storage in this vehicle is definitely uh, lacking a little bit. You have an auto dimming rear view mirror. Jeep does not offer their digital camera rear view mirror that you find in like a Grand Cherokee. And then you can see here, push this button with the one touch sky power roof. This is typically $3,300 extra, but it's an option I highly recommend. Jeep is the only one that still does this. Ford doesn't offer this on the Bronco. It extends all the way back into the back seat, and it basically gives you that kind of roofless feel, the topless feel, at the push of a button, so you guys don't have to deal with all those pieces and whatnot to remove. But overall, the interior definitely still feels uh, pretty upscale, especially on this trim. Jeep also says they've added more sound detonating materials on the higher trims, so it should be quieter. You also have acoustic uh, glass surrounding the vehicle and you also have noise cancellation. So if you guys are on your phone, Jeep says that they've reduced the ambient noise from the outside by about 50% when you guys are using a Bluetooth call because of the active noise cancellation. So overall, they've made this interior more premium, more comfortable, but it also still has all the functionality and the ruggedness uh, that buyers expect in a Wrangler. Now moving to the back seat of the Wrangler, this is a reason why you're gonna to wanna to go to the four-door model because you get around three more inches of legroom back here at around 38.5 inches. This actually is a pretty good amount. It's one of the reasons why the four-door Wrangler is actually a relatively popular family car. And if you guys need to expand the cargo capacity, you basically just pull this little lever here. You can see the seat bottom cushion actually starts to move down on its own and it creates a relatively flat load floor. Now keep in mind, this is the V8 model. It doesn't have the battery pack like in the 4xe that's raising the floor up so you get slightly more cargo space up to 72 cubic feet when you have all the seats folded these seats they don't recline sadly but again they are a pretty good place to spend time now getting back here you can see it's a really high step in height because there's no uh, rails or anything to help myself get in. But once you're back here, you can see the interior of the back seat is actually pretty usable. There isn't a flat floor over here, uh, so it intrudes on your middle passenger, but you do have rear seat air vents. You have power window controls and actual uh, power outlet over here, along with two USB charging ports. There's actually, actually four of them. There's USB A's and USB C's. The one other big safety tech that Jeep added this year is the fact that all Wranglers, except for the base sport model, come with side curtain airbags. I know it's a, it's a safety tech that's been around for decades, but Wranglers have never had side curtain airbags until now. They've really done a good job of integrating it into the actual roll cage of the vehicle. So basically the airbags will come out even though you've taken the roof off, you've taken the doors off, and this is a great safety feature to push to your spouse if you're considering this vehicle as a family car. Now you can see over here, there's an armrest that folds down and gives you two cup holders. No additional storage, however, like a little center console storage area. Uh, and then you can see here, there's speakers here on the roof, which is kind of, kind of blocks the view out, out. So you can see this is part of the roll bar here. 
Um, in something like the Ford Bronco, there's a completely you know barless area here, so you have an uninterrupted view. The other thing I also want to clarify, I mentioned in the front seat area, it has active noise cancellation. I actually misspoke. Jeep says that the noise cancellation is going to only help if you're inside the vehicle talking to a front seat passenger or back seat passenger. It won't necessarily help when you're on a Bluetooth call. So that's a little technicality that I want to clarify. But overall, you can see for five foot seven, there's a pretty good amount of headspace, good leg room for me. I can kind of get back here and cross my legs if I like. There's soft touch materials back here as well, which is nice with padded leather over here. Uh, and then the Alpine stereo that my tester has also uh, has like 572 watts, nine speakers. It sounds pretty good for those of you who get tired of listening to the V8. However, uh, I personally would rather listen to the V8, but overall as a family vehicle, as you can see, the Wrangler definitely excels. Now, before we get into the powertrain specs of the refreshed Wrangler, I actually have an opportunity to show you guys both the body styles together. This obviously is the two-door version. This is a Willys configuration. The two-door is not the strong seller that it used to be. Jeep, I think, says only about 20% of Wrangler buyers buy the two-door configuration. You can see this one here also has the half doors, which also have been just turned into a bar, which you kind of just open up like this. This is truly going to give you the open air experience, but 166 inches long, this is about uh, 20 inches shorter versus the four door model. Actually, it may actually be a little more than that uh, because again, this model here is designed to be the most off-road capable. This is definitely going to be the most practical. Now, starting off with the powertrains, there are a total of four different engines, although it could be considered five or six if you start considering the transmissions and the fact that you get a mild hybrid or a non-mild hybrid with the V6. But this model here is the non-mild hybrid 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. The powertrain is completely unchanged for 2024, so you have 285 horsepower and 200 60 pound-feet of torque. Jeep still offers a choice between either a six-speed manual on the V6 only or an eight-speed automatic. The automatic is around $4,500 more expensive, but you're going to have to tick that box if you guys want to get uh, up to the 5,000 pound towing capacity because on the Rubicon trims with the V6 or the four-cylinder turbo eight-speed auto without the hybrid system, these have the new uh, Dana 44 uh, float style HD axles, which means you can tow up to 5,000 pounds, 3,500 pounds on most of the other trims. This model here should be rated to get around 18 in the city, 23 on the highway. Jeep technically hasn't released final fuel economy figures yet. However, th those figures I quoted you were for a 2023 model. I expect it to be pretty similar. As this one sits, it should weigh in at around 4,600 pounds. Jeep quotes a zero to 60 time of maybe a little over eight seconds with the eight speed automatic transmission. The two liter turbo non-hybrid, this is going to be about a $2,000 charge depending on the trim configuration. This is the non-hybrid two liter turbo, which means uh, the two liter direct injection four cylinder makes 270 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. It all goes out through just an eight speed auto. You cannot get the two liter turbo for with a manual only on the V6. And fuel economy, this model here, the two-door Willys, should be rated to get around 23, 24 MPG. Um, the the two-door is going to be a little bit lighter versus the four-door, so it'll get slightly better MPG. This is actually better gas mileage versus the four by E when you don't have the hybrid system working to help uh, improve the fuel efficiency. Uh, in terms of zero to 60, Jeep says around seven seconds for this model here. Uh, this model, not the Willys here, uh, we'll tell a maximum of 5,000 on the Rubicon. This one here should top out at around 2,000 to 3,500, depending again on the trim configuration. And the two-door is a lot lighter. As this one sits, it weighs in at just over 4,000 pounds. Now, for those of you who crave an electrified option with your Wrangler, let's go ahead and talk about the powertrain in the 4xe. Now, again, this model got no changes underneath the hood. And Jeep says this actually accounts for nearly 40% of Wrangler sales. 40% is a pretty big amount. Jeep says it continues to increase every year. But under the hood here, we still have the company's two liter turbocharged direct injection four cylinder. It's paired up with two electric motors. The main one is sandwiched between the engine and the transmission, the eight speed automatic, um, which is similar to the other transmissions. The gas engine on its own delivers 270 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. It's augmented by a 134 horsepower electric motor that also delivers 181 pound-feet of torque. When you combine the outputs, Jeep says you get 375 horsepower, which is a pretty good amount, and 470 pound-feet of torque. That's the same torque as the range-topping V8 uh, option. It's rated to get around 20 mpg combined, 49 mpg e when you combine it with the 49 kil or with the 17.1 kilowatt-hour battery pack, uh, which means you're going to have to 
charge this vehicle up to give you around 21 miles of electric only range. Jeep says you'll do zero to 60 in around six seconds for this model. The 4xe sadly will only tow a maximum of 3,500 pounds. So if you guys want the 5,000 pound max towing capacity, again, you have to step down to the 3.6 V6 or the base two liter turbo without the plug-in hybrid stuff. Jeep says it's because of the added weight of this vehicle, which as this sits, it weighs in at just over 5,200 pounds. So this is one of the heavier versions of the Wrangler. So at the very top of the Wrangler engine family lives the Rubicon 392. And this is a special Wrangler because it's the only way you can get your vehicle with a V8. And as you guys probably assumed, it sounds fantastic. So let's go ahead and fire it up and hear how it sounds. And that noise is definitely gonna make me miss a, an internal combustion engine, because as you guys know, the entire industry seems to be moving toward electrification. But let's go ahead and show you guys the, all the ruckus that's coming from underneath the hood of the Rubicon 392. Now, some of you were kind of hoping that Jeep would eventually have put the Hellcat motor in this vehicle, but it's just not necessary considering the size of the Wrangler. But we have, of course, the tried and true 6.4 liter Hemi V8. So this is a pushrod V8, two valves per cylinder. Uh, it's very rudimentary in its design. It's uh, two valves per cylinder pushrod design. Like I said, it doesn't even have direct injection, but it does have variable cylinder management and it also delivers 470 horsepower and 470 pound feet of torque. Again, this is the most powerful production Wrangler that Jeep has ever made. It all goes out through an eight speed automatic transmission, full time four wheel drive with locking front and rear diffs with a front sway bar disconnect. Fuel economy, if you guys are wondering, Jeep hasn't announced final fuel economy figures for the 2024 model. However, the 2023 model was rated at 13 in the city, 17 on the highway. So obviously the most thirsty of the Wranglers, but also the quickest, zero to 60 in 4.5 seconds, which is just insane considering a vehicle like this that has live axles front and rear, a recirculating ball type steering. As this one sits, it weighs in around the same as the 4xe at around 5,200 pounds. This model here sadly will not tow up to 5,000 pounds. It maxes out at 3,500 pounds because of the extra weight that you're carrying around from the V8 engine. So Jeep hasn't really made any changes to the driving feel of the 2024 Wrangler, but I start. I thought I'd start off the driving scene in the 4xe model because Jeep says this accounts for nearly 40% of sales. And I have to tell you, uh, my fiance and I bought one and this represents kind of like the best of both worlds because we have the 21 miles of electric only range. And then when you have it in hybrid mode, this is actually a very fast vehicle, which I will demonstrate very quickly right now. So brake torque the vehicle, have it in 4x4 auto, <laughs> it actually will spin out the front tires, which is kind of hilarious to think about. 5.7 seconds there. Now, if you don't brake torque the vehicle, it should do it in about 6.5 seconds. Uh, Jeep claims six, but this vehicle is definitely faster in the real world versus Jeep's claim. And especially when you start driving it around and you want to drag race in it. I think the quickest I've ever seen in this vehicle when I tested one back home was around the low to mid five second range because we are sitting here at around 3000 feet above sea level. You are going to have to deal with a little bit of that elevation. Uh, up in this area that's gonna slow the vehicle down slightly, ever so slightly, because remember, this is a turbocharged engine with a powerful electric motor, uh, and it kind of gives you instantaneous torque everywhere, where the electric motor gives you the torque, and then the uh, uh, turbo engine kind of gives you that higher output when you need it to. Now, I switched it over to electric mode because I wanna show you guys a little bit of driving in its EV mode. Now, this vehicle also has their regen braking system, or it's kind of, kind of like a regen braking system. You push that button, it gives you max regen, and the vehicle allows you to almost have a one pedal drive. But when you wanna drive it around town, the Wrangler can do so because it has 134 horsepower. Now it's not fast when it's in this mode. On highway speeds, if you put your foot down all the way, it will wake up the gas engine and the gas engine doesn't sound great. Jeep's two liter turbo doesn't sound all that pleasant, but the EV part of this vehicle makes those interesting EV high tech wailing noises. And then you can also hear the transmission and feel the transmission shift, which is interesting. And it kind of, again, it gives you that futuristic feel. And then it's also great when you're off-roading. If you want to off-road this vehicle in total silence, Jeep allows you to do that with the 4xe powertrain. Keep in mind the four, the 392, I'm going to try to hop into the 392 later on uh, and show you guys the 060 of that vehicle. That'll do it, Jeep says, in 4.5 seconds. But again, 5.7 that I just got back there is certainly no slouch. This is a very fast vehicle when you need it to be. 
In terms of on-road dynamics, you still have live axles front and rear. You have a recirculating ball type steering. There's this new active sound canceling in this vehicle, which is supposed to make the interior quieter for passengers when you're talking uh, and just around or in the vehicle at highway speeds. I didn't really notice that it was that much quieter. The vehicle itself is pretty loud with this one touch sky roof. You hear a lot of wind noise, which again can be fixed if you just simply push this and open it up. This will basically operate at speeds of up to 50 miles an hour. If you try to close it at higher than 50, the vehicle's computer will actually tell you to slow down. But this is the whole purpose of a Jeep. When you're on the road, being able to put the roof back, feel the wind in your hair, the sun in your face, like this is the reason why people love Wranglers. Now, granted, they are still not the best vehicle for driving on the road. The ride quality is still a little bit bouncy. The steering is loosey-goosey. The vehicle has soft suspension, but all of that isn't going to matter when you drive this vehicle off-road, which Jeep has set up, of course, a nice little off-road course for us. And we're going to go ahead and queue over to that because obviously this is a Jeep. It wouldn't be a Jeep program without showing you guys some of the off-road capability. And Jeep says that they've made it even better, of course, with this refresh model, especially if you guys go for that extreme recon package that you get uh, with the uh, 392, or you can option in for four grand uh, on, on the Rubicon and Rubicon X trim levels. So for the off-road course, Jeep actually has us uh, going onto this sand, deep sand area, and I've switched the vehicle over to four low and engaged the off-road plus. Now we are also in a Willys trim, which is the more reasonably priced model versus this $77,000 price tag of the other one that uh, was the skid plates. <laughs> the skid plates were being put to very good use there. <laughs> That's why we have them. <laughs> but uh, yes, we are in deep, some uh, soft, deep sand here. And we, have, we also have the tires deflated to around 20 PSI. So uh, this vehicle is pretty much in its uh, element right now. And I really appreciate the Willys trim because it's just more of the simpler off-roader vehicle. It has the lockers that uh, was new are new this year taken from the Rubicon trim um, and as you can see we're kind of following this gladiator up this uh, little rock trail and this model here that we're driving has around 10.8 inches of ground clearance on 33 inch tall BF Goodrich tires again this is where we're really appreciating the uh, solid axles front and rear although Rob's probably not appreciating it quite as yeah, much really <laughs> yeah you definitely <laughs> get you get less of the uh, movement when you're actually driving the vehicle I'm I sure got a grab handle yeah right you do have a grab handle there you go <laughs> interesting this I, it's been a while since I've driven in soft sand but it's always an interesting feeling what's also great is we're in the 4 by e model so we're doing it in silence right now in pure electric mode which is kind of fun only hear that air conditioning yeah we definitely need. <laughs> yeah and it's also extremely beautiful out here as well with that lake right next door. I can really, it's interesting, the soft sand is making the vehicle kind of move in directions I'm not expecting to. I've got a counter steer here with the steering wheel, which live axle steering, it's not the most uh, intuitive or precise steering, but it's effective when you're hitting these rocks and going up some boulders and whatnot. <laughs> Sorry, Rob. <laughs> it doesn't even rock stuff, man. I know. <laughs> you better hold on to that grab handle there. That's why right. it's there. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, this kind of terrain is, you know, nothing for a Wrangler like this. This vehicle, it's crazy to think that you can get even more off-road capability with the Extreme Recon package, but just going through some sand here, deflate the tires, just put it in, it doesn't even require four low, but Jeep has us in it for precautionary measures. It uh, kind of just goes through this like we're driving on asphalt. That's kind of how it feels. It just feels like it's effortless. Still in EV mode. <laughs> I do love driving in sand. That's the one thing I haven't driven in in a while is sand. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of fun when you drive. You just have PTSD though. <laughs> yes, yeah, so when I got that Land Cruiser stuck all those years ago, because <laughs> I was stupid and I didn't deflate the tires. That was a rookie mistake. Yeah, you're old and seasoned now. It's okay. You know better. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Now, it wouldn't be a Jeep event without some absolutely terrifying off-road obstacles to go over. And as you can see, we're going to be driving up literally something that I probably wouldn't want to climb up, but we're going to get it up here. And I've got spotters, thankfully, to help me do so. And we have the vehicle in four low still. Oh, my God, this is terrifying. Oh, my goodness. Driver a little bit. There you go. Coming forward. Good. There you go. Coming up. Good. Now start turning 
you drive it nice and smooth. That's good. I literally cannot see anything. That's fine. <laughs> that's, that's, that's part of wheeling. Okay. Trust your spotter. Good. Straight. Okay. Now follow his lead. Okay. Ooh. Nice and straight. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Wow. <laughs> this is like butt clenching. <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Thank God for those skid plates. <laughs> oh God. This is terrifying. Okay. Oh, thank you. So you got some good flex to that. Too. <laughs> yeah. Doing great. Wow, I, I probably wouldn't even want to walk up this, let alone drive up it. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's only done it about 30 times. <laughs> yeah, so this is where uh, Jeep really sets themselves apart on these off-road courses. That was nerve-wracking, to say the least. One wrong move without the spotter's help, and you could have easily fallen off that cliff. <laughs> that was terrifying. <laughs> that was so terrifying. <laughs> I was the one underneath you. <laughs> All right, so are you getting back in? <laughs> yeah, I'll get back. So while the 4xe was pretty quick, as you can see, Rob and I have switched over to the 392, the V8 powered Wrangler. And Rob hasn't had a chance to drive this model yet, but I wanted to show you guys how fast this thing is. Jeep says, so good. <laughs> Jeep says 4.5 seconds. I suspect it's conservative. Now, Rob, when you do launch it, make sure you press really hard on the brake because it Use will lurch. All of my weights. <laughs> it, uh... will, it will lurch, but let's just go ahead and see what we can get. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, it sounds good. 5.5. <laughs> What? Yeah, what? that's... <laughs> We're actually on a really level surface. Now, granted, we are at about 3,000 feet above sea level here. Um, so... And no forced induction. Right, this so. is a naturally aspirated engine, so it's going to be slower. I mean... And it's as, hot as hell out it is. It is very warm. It's 93 <laughs> outside, and it's very hot, so... Try maybe one more if we find a flat area. I don't know. But I still... Five and a half. We got... I got 5.7 in the 4xe yeah. on oh, that same stretch. Is not to be like... <laughs> it is embarrassing, but again, that shows you how much electrification and turbocharging don't get affected by high altitude versus naturally aspirated, but that sound... Absolutely. That sound is fantastic. <laughs> I'm gonna pull over and just give it one more shot here because I have faith in this big boy. Let's give it a little bit more. Come on, baby, you can do this. <laughs> Listen to that noise. 5.2. Yeah, okay. Whittled it down a little bit. All right. Okay. She's had a long day with journalists, so we'll, we'll let it pass. But that sounds good. It sounds so good. I mean, oh that, I'm gonna God. miss that. I mean, it's like muscle car. It I mean, <laughs> it's a freaking muscle. Oh, soft limiter at 4,000 on the roll, but oh well. Yeah, this is the sound that's going to be missed by enthusiasts everywhere because it's just like all the noise. Oh, you don't want to be going this no, fast you don't. In this <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Remember, we're circulating ball steering, yeah. live axles, and this thing is fat, 5,300 5, pounds. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't handle very well, but boy, does it want to go fast in a straight line. It sounds so good, too. It really does. <laughs> All right. So it wouldn't be a Jeep program without some form of butt clenching, skid plate bashing off-road situations. And after spending the day driving the refreshed 2024 Wrangler, it's pretty obvious to me that Jeep wanted to keep the off-road capability of this model in tech, while also improving a lot of the tech aspects that really bring this vehicle more into the 21st century. As you guys know, with the Wrangler, this is Jeep's most popular model. The company consistently does over 200,000 units every year. And in fact, in terms of the 4xe, which is the one I have behind me, I've switched to this Willys model, Jeep should roughly do around 100,000 4 bys every year. This is what Jeep says to be the best-selling plug-in hybrid vehicle in America. The Grand Cherokee 4 bye is technically the second best-selling. Now this model here, the Willys, as you can see, is kind of like the sweet spot if you guys are slightly more on a budget in terms of off-road vehicles. As you guys saw, the 4 bye is capable of sprinting to 0-60 to 60 in just 4.7 seconds. The uh, Rubicon 392 is going to be about a second faster than that model, while obviously speed isn't necessarily necessarily the point of a Wrangler. It's all about the lifestyle aspect. It's nice to know that Jeep has obviously made this vehicle much quicker in terms of real world acceleration. You'll get really good range if you guys go for the 4xe models. And then for those of you who want something special, obviously the 392 is the one you're going to want to get. Now, if you guys plan to do some serious towing, you're going to want to go for the V6 or the 2 liter turbo non-hybrid because those are the only ones that will tow 
a maximum of 5,000 pounds. It's still not the best vehicle on the roads, but off the road, as you guys saw, it's just a mountain goat. This is still one of the most off-road capable vehicles out there. And it's the reason why, again, a lot of manufacturers are jumping back to the segment with Ford did it with the Bronco, uh, Land Rover did it with the Defender, and we should be expecting to see a new Toyota Land Cruiser at some point. And I'm hoping eventually maybe Nissan will even join the fun because as you guys know, this segment continues to get even better and better. Now, if you guys are looking to get your hands on the 2024 Wrangler, Jeep says that these are heading to showrooms in Q3 of 2023. So it should be another month or so. You can now go to your Jeep dealership and order one now. Uh, and it starts at around $31,800 for the base sport two-door Wrangler. All of them come standard with four-wheel drive. Add around $4,000 if you want for, or if you want the four-door version. Most of you are probably going to do that. Most of you are also probably going to at least step it up to the Sport S. That's going to get you features like power windows and door locks, keyless entry, cruise control, all the usual uh, stuff that you expect. That's going to come in at under $40,000 for the four-door version. If you guys want a 4xe, Jeep is now introducing a Sport S 4xe. So there's a new entry point that brings the starting price of the 4xe model to just under $50,000. $49,995. This Willys version is designed to be kind of like a sweet spot uh, at around 55 grand, plus the options that my tester has puts it at around $60,000. I know 60 grand is still a lot of money for something like this, but keep in mind this does still qualify for this, the federal tax credit because it is built, of course, in the USA. It's built in Ohio. Uh, and also, I want you guys to remember the 4xe that we showed you earlier, the Rubicon X. That one ha was around $76,000. That's the most expensive that you can buy a 4xe Wrangler. If you guys also want the V8 Wrangler, that's going to come in at just under $90,000. So Jeep has definitely increased the price of the higher end versions by as much as $8,000. But on the low end, Jeep only increased the price by about $500, especially if you guys want to go for the base sport. But I think at $60,000, this is a nice sweet spot. But just keep in mind, most of you who do want all the new luxury features, you're going to be spending upwards of sixty to $70,000 for the higher end versions of the Wrangler. And it's kind of crazy to me how expensive this vehicle has become. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2024 Jeep Wrangler. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.